Hey guys, it's me, Helena. Um, I'm actually going to be using my KitchenAid mixer for the very first time. Um, I took a video of the mixer and showed pictures of stuff I had previously made, and it was not made with the KitchenAid mixer. So I'm going to make some challah bread. Today is Friday. It's usually a thing that you make for a Shabbat dinner. So we are going to be making that today. Do you like challah bread? Yes! Yes. Um, and this recipe, I like to put garlic or rosemary in it just because that's something I prefer. So anyway, I will give you um, the recipe. Uh, so you need three cloves of garlic, you need a half a cup of sugar, a half a cup of olive oil, six and a half cups of flour, eight egg yolks, three packages of quick dry yeast, two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and two eggs, um, you know, just beaten lightly, not overdone, just do it by hand. And that last two eggs part is just going to go over the bread that you use to kind of spread over the bread with, um, you know, your little pastry brush, I think that's what it's called. So anyway, we will get started with our um, ingredients and we'll come back in just a minute. Alright guys, I added three package of quick dry yeast. And I added two cups of lukewarm water, and it is mixing in there right now. Um, make sure when you use the water that it's lukewarm and not hot and not cold. If it's too hot, it can kill the yeast and the bread won't rise properly. So anyway, um, I'm mixing mine for about, it's been about a minute or less. And then you wait, oops, then you wait about 10 minutes until it gets all nice and foamy. And then you add in the rest of the ingredients, 8 to 10 minutes. All right, well, we'll be back. We're taking a short break. All right, guys, we are going to add in the half cup of olive oil and the half cup of sugar and the eight egg yolks. My lovely assistant, I mean handsome assistant, will be helping me. Let's see, can we even see you in the camera, bud? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the whisk again for this part. And I will put this part down. I'm going to use the spill guard or whatever it's called. It comes with the Artisan series. And I'm going to turn my whisk on number four. You want to come help me? I'm very full over. We could do it from there. Okay, pour it in. Okay. You gotta pour it in slow. So we got that going. Now we are going to add in the eggs. Can you help me? Do it really slow, okay? Wait. Okay. What kind of turn? Well, it turned a little bit yellow, huh? Alright, so now I'm going to use the spatula to get the rest of the egg yolk out and just come out all the way. I hope you guys can even hear me at all. <laughs> okay. So we have that. And now I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to tilt the head back. Oops, not mixed in yet. Alright, I have it on number six now. Now eight. Okay, 
So, oops, I'm going to tilt the head back and let that run, and we will be back with the next portion of our bread. All right, guys, I'm back. My assistant is no longer helping me because my husband's home and he wants to play with his dad. So, right now, I am changing it from the whisk to the stirring, stir, I'm not even sure if that's what it's called, and I am going to add in the six and a half cups of flour and garlic and the rosemary. I actually didn't have rosemary, so I'm going to use thyme. It's going to taste a little bit differently than what I like, but use what you got. Um, anyway, so here we go. I'm locking it so it doesn't bounce around. And I will add my first, this is yeah, about two cups, four cups, and half. So I will start it probably on like four and gradually increase it. Um, and I'll start from over here because I don't think you guys can see me over there. So here we go. Alright guys, I just added in my kosher salt, my garlic, and rosemary. Um, also, I am now, sorry, I am now using the dough hook because the dough got so thick that I had to take off the stir, use a spatula and clean it off, and now I am going to knead it for um, 8 to 10 minutes. So, oops, it's not locked. I have kneaded the dough for about eight minutes, and now I am going to take the dough and feed it, cover it, let it sit for, I think, I'm pretty sure 45 minutes, and then I will push it down, let it do it for another 45 minutes. If I'm wrong on the time, I'll let you guys know. All right, well, we'll be back. All right, guys, so I am back. Um, the dough has risen. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. I'm going to punch it down, and I will be back in another 45 minutes. All right, guys, I'm back. So what has happened is I took out the dough, I separated it into four equal parts, and I started making up my loaves. I'm going to show you how I did that. I also took a little piece of the dough extra and used cookie cutters so that I can kind of put something on top of the loaf. So first what you do is you take the dough and you separate it into three equal parts. And um, I don't have like a scale or anything to weigh the dough, so I just do it all by hand. My husband is standing behind the camera making funny faces trying to get me to laugh. And it's working actually. So anyway, um, best thing to do is do it with your hands. I use the rolling pin to make out the little cookie cutters to put on top. But you roll it out with your hands, stretch it a little, kind of squeeze it. And um, Also, I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees right now, just so you guys know. So that's one strand of the braid. They will kind of shrink up a little, so I'll have to go back and stretch them out again. So I'll show you guys how to do that right here on camera. The last time I made the bread, I showed a picture of it um, in the last video I did, and it didn't look very good because I killed the yeast and um, I kind of messed up the bread. But this time, the braids so far look good and I'm letting them rise after I braid them for about 10 minutes because you kind of just want them to fluff up a little bit. You can see them over here. I will show you guys that in a minute. But um, also with these strands, they will shrink up, so you'll have to stretch them out again a few times before you actually braid it unless you want a really short loaf. So that is kind of taking a little while. Um, sorry, that would be my husband's cell phone ringing in the background. But anyway, here is one of the loaves, and it has a cookie cutout of a dreidel, 
another one of the lobes has... Okay, sorry about that. My battery died. But anyway, I was showing you the different lobes. And uh, you like it's good to wait a few minutes in between stretching out the strands, sorry, for your braid because they do shrink up, like I said. And um, now they are pretty good to get ready to start braiding it up. So I will start with taking these three, and I'll bring it up closer actually so you can see me braid it. Okay, so hold on just a second. So I will take these three pieces and just kind of pinch them together like that and roll it up, just kind of punch it down with your hand. Then just like a braid, you move one over, move one over, move one over, all the way until the braid is completed. Not very difficult at all. I am also kind of pulling them. I don't know if you can tell, but I am also pulling them to kind of help. And then punch that part down. Can you guys see that in the camera? Yep, you can. And kind of tuck it under. <clears throat> then I'm taking my cutout. This is supposed to be Maccabees and not a gingerbread man. Um, so I will lay that there. And then this is supposed to be... I was supposed to grab the shield, and I accidentally grabbed the dreidel. So he'll be holding a dreidel instead of the shield. And then this is just the Star of David, and I'll just put that on there. So this is like a pretty festive loaf of bread. And that should sit about 30 minutes before it goes into the oven. So that'll be the last one that goes in. My son will really get a kick out of all the decorations on that one. But I'll show you guys these again. So this one has a bigger, a larger Star of David on it. This one has the ram's horn. And those are puffed up a lot, so that one kind of has a way to go. And then we have this one right over here, which is going in the oven first. I put it on tin foil so that it won't stick to the bottom of the pan as badly. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will be back with the finished product. Also, I'm going to crack two eggs for all four of these loaves and mix them up and use my parchment brush, or pastry brush, sorry, and spread it over the top of this and then put it in the oven. Then as soon as I take it out, I'll pour salt on it and butter. So be back with that.